Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I'm going to show y'all how to make this bracelet. So let's get started. Here's the prototype of this piece that I had made. I had started out by sketching um, loosely what it was going to look like. Uh, this is relatively new to me actually planning a piece before I execute it. Um, but for where this bead is it came in really helpful that way I could kind of plan the wire's path and uh, and I didn't quite cut enough wire so you can see here I had to kind of like twist it a bit but we'll uh, we'll talk more about that as we get there so today I am using Parawire because I love their stuff and it's super good this is not a paid endorsement but they are super awesome um, <laughs> Uh, I've been using their wire for probably like 10 years and it, it just it ages really well their enameled copper stuff does they also carry uh, Silver filled which has a much thicker silver plating on it um, so it oxidizes and behaves very similarly to silver wire, but You don't have to worry about like the price as much, but I'm using 16 gauge in their vintage bronze color and I'm going to cut off significantly more than what I thought I would need. Um, in the prototype, I didn't want to be wasteful, so I gave myself a little... Uh, I was skimping on the wire a bit. Um, but they're affordable enough, especially with their uh, enameled stuff, that I'd rather... I'm not waste, but like I'd rather sacrifice um, uh, an inch or two. And be able to design freely. And yep, so there's all their info and stuff. There will be affiliate links down in the video description um, to where you can find the tools and bracelet base and other things that I'm working with. <clears throat> so uh, anything that you purchase through those links greatly helps out our channel. So on this one, I was using 28 gauge in the vintage bronze as well, but I'm actually going to be using their silver plated titanium color uh, for this tutorial's sake. Uh, it gives a little bit more contrast and honestly I think it's going to look very cool with the steampunk theme. So I'm just pulling off two full arm spans and I'm about five foot four, so let's call it ten feet of wire. Which their bulk spools, this has how much? 2,000 feet. You can get you can get a lot <laughs> out of one of these spools, and I found one end one end of the wire, and I'm coming around to find the other. Well, and I just threw it on the ground. Um, so find the middle, however that comes easiest to you, if it comes easily at all. I'm gonna change the angle of the camera a bit, and I'm going to begin in the center of the piece and the wire. There's just dog fur everywhere. I sweat and I swear it just stirs it up into the air more than more than anything. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five coils. Move that into the center. Add in our other wire. Where goes the doggy out? And then wrap twice around both hush puppy it's okay it sounds like there's a neighbor outside or something how dare they so twice around both I don't know why I just prefer working from the other angle so one two three four and five and then wrap two around both and if you're having trouble I like to just split it just a little just give it a little bit of a bend so that way our top wire is pointing that way and it just makes it a little easier for me to get in there so I am going to four five repeat this until I have about an inch and a half we're going to want, in effect, I can go in and count, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 repetitions. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll meet you all right back here. 
So I actually did 15 repetitions just because I felt like it. Um, and as I was weaving, I was thinking about, I really wish that I had maybe started out using 16 gauge wire more frequently because for the longest time, uh, I stuck to like 20 gauge or 18 gauge for my core wires when I'm weaving. Um, and they bent so much more easily, but the 16 gauge is very good about, it just stays where it is. I didn't have any problems with like warping or anything. Um, so if you're having trouble keeping multiple lines, um, of wire, behaving and all like sorted in their rows whenever you're doing multiple like core wire weaves uh it maybe try out some 16 gauge a heavier gauge and also you could do this with with the 16 gauge it could work well with up to 24 gauge but again i think the 28 gauge is very easy very malleable very you know nice so um it, again for just starting out if this is your first weaving project I would recommend trying out some 16 and 28 gauge wire um, now also let's take a look at this bracelet <clears throat> for our side beads here I used eight millimeter round rose quartz and then for this bracelet I'm actually going to be using uh, it's a 10 millimeter like little I don't know like sprocket like i don't know it was steampunk themed strand of beads from like michael's <laughs> so and the way that i secured this in here is i used let me grab a tube of it this stuff devcon five minute epoxy um i just mix it up on a scrap piece of paper um with like a toothpick and put just a glob in the, and smush uh and oops and then throw it you can see it's very durable <laughs> Um, but that's how I do my cabs and stuff as well. You could use E6000. Um, I don't know. I'm not very good at using E6000. I think it's because I always try to use too much of it. Because um, I treat it the way I would an epoxy. And it doesn't, like, that's just not how you use it, I don't think. So, oh no. The kitty is being harassed by the dogs. Um, so now we're going to come through and start shaping our wire around. Um, I'm just using my fingers, but you could totally, in fact, let's try it. If you have like a wooden dowel or a ring mandrel or something, we can get in here and use it to shape our wire. And that's probably, yeah, that works a lot better than just using my fingers. Now I've made it much smaller than what it needs to be. But I like that because now we can just expand it just a bit and it's gonna fit very nice and snug against the rest of our work. So you can see it sits pretty comfortably there and I am loving this uh, metal color combo. <clears throat> so now we're going to follow around into our side weave here. So the way I'm going to do that is we're going to split off. I'm going to move our long weaving wires off to the side. That way they're still there, but they're a little bit out of the way. <clears throat> and I like to use these stepped pliers. And we'll find the one that's pretty close to our bead size, as I thought it's the 10 millimeter. And I'm going to get in here split that just away a little bit more <clears throat> and I'm going to use this part of our pliers let's zoom out just a little bit and I'm functioning with this side the the side that's between me and the work um, as the front and the side that's facing the table is the back just so y'all know what I mean when I say words. Um, so I want to make sure to have this wire go across the front on both sides. And I'm being sure to not squeeze too much because this is still a very soft wire. Um, so I don't want to leave like plier bite marks. And you could just use a knitting needle also. I just, I like this tool because it replaces six other tools or um, I do have some like loose mandrels that like one has this size and the other has those sizes, but I always lose them. Um, so now 
we've twisted around that side let's go ahead and do the other side because I don't know about y'all but symmetry can be pretty difficult to achieve um, in a lot of a lot of things actually so anything I can do to make it a little bit easier so whenever I do one step on one side while it's still fresh in my mind I'm gonna come through and do that same step over here on the other side and so now do, 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 splitting my weaving wires off to each side let's test and make sure that the bead fits okay oh it's just a little big for it so what we'll do then is we'll just kind of push on that see how that enlarged it a little bit not quite enough though there we go and we could have just as easily uh, just shaped the wire around the bead. I say just as easily, but I have a really hard time with that sometimes. Just getting the wire to sit just where I want it to. There we go. Okay, so now that we have those at the proper size for our beads, I'm going to thread this wire between between the back and the front. That way it's just sandwiched between them. And I'm going to thread our bead on. Just like that. Bringing it all the way down, making sure that we aren't getting any kinks or anything in the wire. Um, this is another great instance to just really get it to want to sit in there. And now I'm going to wrap that wire, pushing the bead through just a little bit to the back side. And again, humans exist outside the house, so the dogs are freaking out. I'm sorry. I just thread through our bead. And now I'm going to pull through. Oh, we got all tangled on a pile of pliers. And so now you can see it just snaps right in place. And by holding on to this edge, not only has it deposited us back where our weaving left off, but it's holding our bead in place pretty nicely. And so now we're going to be continuing our weave around. And so I'm just going to come to the back. And I'm going to go, ooh, let's get that a little bit closer. One and two rotations. It's a little bit wonky there. Let's see if we can get it to be less wonky. Maybe some smooshing is in order. Smoosh. Yeah, that did the trick. Okay. <laughs> so hooking around once and twice. And then one, two, three, four, five. Now I still wish that I would had like another inch to use. It just, it uses up way more than what is intuitive to me to make that loop around. Um, but never mind. Two three, four, five, there's two, one, two, three, four, five, and we're just going to keep repeating this as we come around, kind of just shaping it. There's one, two, and you could do this with, gosh, any, any weave. I just like this one because it kind of looks like it reminiscent to me of like the little sprocket edges and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Um, I thought it cool. Three, four, five, smoosh. One and two. 
Now also, don't forget to test fit. Because as we come around here, I want these little sprocket thingies, like these little side beads, to sit centered up properly on either side of the bracelet. Like I want it to sit very in line. I don't want it to be too offset to one side or the other. So let's actually bring that down just a little bit more. That's pretty cool. I think I like that. And so now this guy is going to want to come around like that on this side. It's just letting me know how much further I'm going to have to uh, continue to weave. Yeah, really wishing I'd given myself a couple more inches still um, on the wire. The, I guess the back side wire. <coughs> Excuse me. One and two, and then there's one, two, three, four, five. Now also, just to keep the video a little shorter, um, I'm going to have it to where we'll just repeat this same thing on the other side, but off camera, because it is literally like exactly the same. And then we'll meet back here to um so if you need help just re-watch this segment of the video again for the other side and then we'll meet back here for attaching it but we're not quite there yet four five in fact i don't even i don't know if i'm going to have enough deck number because <laughs> I wanted uh, this to be like the back side of like a really cute spiral. So I'm going to do, let's do two more and see what happens. Because that's the thing is you can always splice in more weaving wire, but if your core wires aren't long enough, that's kind of just it. Okay. okay. One more. Okay, so now from here, I am just going to two, whoop, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Smoosh. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, that could be ten. Smoosh. And so I'm going to pinch right here and start to kind of bend around. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 20. So we ended up doing a total of 40 repetitions. So I'm not going to snip it though. I was about to. I don't know if you saw, but I was about to, but don't do it yet. I'm going to snip about four, like don't snip your weaving wire, snip your core wire about four millimeters past where your coiling stops, leaving that little tail hanging out the end. I'm going to grab as close to the tip of the pliers, as close to the tip of the wire as I can and just start making a little spiral because we're going to try really hard to tuck that little spiral good opportunity for nylon jaw pliers to just kind of grab and come in grab did i yep i did didn't i goodness well Grab a little farther up. Smush it in. It actually worked better without the tip. Cool. Um, and so now we'll take this part and bend it around just a bit. And now do a little... So, that's very fortunate. I feel like we ended up with just enough. Like, just barely enough. Normally I like a little bit of a bigger spiral. But you kind of see what we got going on here. So let's 
snug that up, shape that around. Cool. Yeah, I think this will I think this will be just fine, you guys. So now let's do that same exact thing on the other side. One problem is I wanted my tail wire to be exiting. Like right now it's exiting on the front. I want it to be exiting towards the back. So before I get carried away on the next side, I'm just going to poke this through right there. Bring it around, making sure no kinks form as much as we can. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Okay. So yeah, same thing, other side. Let's do it. So I'm finding myself wishing that I had waited to do the little spiral um, until uh, I was at that step for both of them. That way I could have measured, you know, exactly how much and had them been very, very symmetrical. But I did not. So <laughs> uh, I'm going to guess. And a way that if you don't want to guess is we could go ahead to start from the end and start making a spiral and see what happens. But I really think I'm going to cut right here. Hope that works. Because um, <laughs> you can always trim off more, you know, but you can't add on more. So, yeah. You can see that definitely. So I'm going to snip like right here. Now something also to keep in mind with these flat beads, if it, it doesn't fit perfectly, you'll get some swivel on them. But once we've attached it to the backing, like the bracelet base, I don't think we're going to have to worry about that too much. Just something to be mindful of. Yeah, that seems like it's going to work out perfect. Hopefully. There we are. Give it a smush just for good measure. So now we still have our wires poking out the back side like this. I'm going to trim this one back. You only re really need about like 10 to 12 inches. Anything else is just going to get cumbersome at this point. Um, and if you're very short on wire, this is an opportunity to go ahead and splice some in. So I'm going to come in and just push this onto our bracelet base. Get that shaping going. I'm really happy with that so far. And you can see once it's on there, this, these beads aren't moving. Now I do want to turn this so that it will just be in line a little bit more with the bracelet. And so, also, if the same way that we mounted up these beads, I don't know what is going on outside that's freaking the dogs out so much. Um, but, uh, this bead actually had a hole going through it, so we could have just mounted a bead or something in the center and had made our own bracelet base, or even, I think this would be beautiful as a necklace, maybe angled up a little bit into more of a U or a V, um, or worn as a choker even. So the concept can be translated into a lot of different designs, but today we're going to focus on the bracelet. So our wire is exiting out the back here, out this way, and I'm just going to bring it around and hook around right there, bring it up, and let's see if we can't hide it still but just hook it around and pull down. Yeah, that's gonna work out pretty well. And I only need to do that like two or three times um, because I still want to come through and stabilize at other points. So we've done that twice, I think that'll do. And now we're gonna come up through here. I've got that little space up and through. And I'm actually gonna hook over back down to the through the bottom and that puppy is just fretting I don't know if y'all can hear him but he's having a rough day <laughs> sorry I said rough and it's a dog anyways um, if you can't laugh at your own puns then what's the point point? and now I'm just wrapping 
to the base, the base wire itself. And the wire is getting a little short, so there's not as much for me to hold on to. So I'm just going to grip and pull through. Thread through, grip, and pull through. And once more, for good measure, there we are. Now also, you can expand on this too. You could add all sorts of, the. You, know, you could have done this with like five core wires or something. Like there's, there's no rules for this. There's no right or wrong way to get this done. So I'm going to get in here, close as I can, and just snip with my cutters. And then I'm going to smoosh that down. Make sure there's no little pokey bits. And now we get to do that same thing on the other side, and I completely forgot what I did. So, yes. We're exiting out the side here. And we're going to bring it around and hook and bring it around. <clears throat> and really, so long as you're consistent or you like the way that it looks, the, just get it sewn on there. <laughs> And so now we're going to come through. We bound it down. And we could, if you want, do a third rotation on this side. Why not? Might have got a little bit more wire. So making sure that it's wide enough that we can fit. Bringing it down. we go and now I'm gonna come up and through right here and you could use just any hole or a little crevice or space or anything anywhere that you can just slip the uh, wire through really feel like I need to do is end it on the other side so just to maintain that tension. So it's not exactly the same as the other side, but if I don't tell anybody, they might not know. And then just coming through, and it, it, this is holding down that wire, and then we just stitch it to the base. Now these pre-made bracelet bases are really like two or three dollars a piece they come in like I think a 10 pack on Amazon like a five or ten pack there's a couple of different styles I also really like this style especially for if you're going to be doing um, more base wires it gives you more points of attachment all the way down um, I haven't found these to be uncomfortable to put on at all but this alternate style does have these nice little rounded ends um, the only thing that I really preferred the shape and depth of the dish on this one, whereas this one I kind of wish I had filled it with epoxy a bit first, let it cure, and then set the eye in that way, um, or you could just use a regular cabochon or whatever you like, but that way it didn't have quite so much of a, uh... and I may, I may buff this up real nice and uh, dome resin over it just to see what happens, but I really prefer glass to resin. Um, especially for bracelets because I'm constantly bashing my hand into stuff. But ideas, definitely ideas. One, two, three, trying to make sure that they all sit side by side to each other because I don't want any room for wiggle or looseness. There we go, there's four. I like to do at least five rotations. Just, I don't know, that's a round number. I like it. Let's do seven though, because we can fit it. Or six, yeah, just the sixth one. <laughs> I'm just making it up. 
and I can't emphasize that enough, you guys. I truly am just making all this up. So there, I, I've said it. Was I even on camera for any of that? Oh, oh future bot. I'm so sorry, because I know you're not gonna edit this. Okay. Um. So yeah, we just stitched around five or six times. As if to drive the point further home that I don't actually know what I'm doing. Um, we're not, I'm just bumping around into stuff in my craft room and getting it on camera. So if I can do it, you can do it. And just smushing that down. Now also, <clears throat> you can use some different Mod Podge products um, to seal the inside because this is like um, a zinc alloy I think it's like either a copper or steel. I don't know if it's magnetic. I don't know where. No, I think it's a copper core. Um, but it's in a nickel-free plating. But sometimes that'll wear off and it'll still turn people green or it might irritate you. I really recommend, um, this is a spray-on, but I just take the cap off and dip a brush in there and paint the inside of it. Uh, with a thin layer, but I do it like four or five times. And then I let it cure completely. And then we have a very nice little steampunk bracelet, which I think is super cool. Yeah. <laughs> hey y'all, thanks so much for hanging out with me during this video. I really hope that it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. I love hearing from you. Um, if you enjoy my free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them beyond just liking and subscribing and all that good stuff, please consider checking us out over at our Craft Along Club on Patreon, where we send out monthly kits and all sorts of different things, uh, behind the scenes content and whatnot. Um, also there are links to all my social media down below, uh, information about Craft Along Con if you, uh, want to come and craft with me in person, which might be a lot of fun, we will see. Um, I'm very excited about that, actually. Um, anyways, but yeah, just thank you guys so much, and I will see y'all in our next video. So until then, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>